as we get deeper into the problem solving or the math calculations associated with chemistry, one of the things that often comes up is people start uh, getting hung up on how do I do this question, how do I do that question, and getting things mixed up. So what I wanted to do was give you some problem solving tips. And there's a couple things that are going to be the overriding principle of what we do. The first one is units. Units, units, units. Pay attention to the units. What units do you have? What units do you need? And that is honestly non-negotiable. And as we get further into it, that is going to be where most people get uh, trapped. Most people get stuck, most people get tripped up because they'll take a number and they'll throw it into a formula that is just simply not the right formula for it. So pay attention to the units. There's also a rule that is probably the overriding principle of everything and I, I don't know how to say it any more clearly. When in doubt, answer the question. When in doubt, answer the question. Okay, you might think that was a pretty stupid uh, stunt, but you might also think that's a, not a very helpful thing. So let's dig into it a little bit more carefully and I'll show you what I mean. So here's a question that you're going to be seeing, maybe not the exact question, but you're going to see questions like it. You're going to see lots of questions like it. And as we progress, all I'm going to be doing is adding more layers to this kind of question. So what mass is needed to make 425 milliliters of a 0.15 mole per liter solution? That doesn't sound like a ridiculous kind of question. If you needed to make a solution and you needed to start with a solid, that's what I'm going to do. Figure out a mass, make a solution out of it. So the question is, what mass? When in doubt, answer the question. How do I find mass? I have a grand total of one way of finding mass, and that is number of moles times molar mass. Okay, what do I need? What do I have? I need number of moles. Do I have number of moles? I don't have number of moles. So I can't find mass yet. Do I have the molar mass? Well, molar mass is take the numbers from the periodic table and add them up. Yes, I do. I can do that because I have a chemical formula. Okay, before I can solve this problem then, I need one more piece of information. I need the number of moles. So, what do I have and how can I find that? Well, I have this other triangle that I use for solutions. Cool because I have a solution. So there, using that formula, number of moles is the concentration, molar concentration, moles per liter, what units do I have, what units do I need, molar concentration times volume. Do I have a molar concentration? Yes, right there in the question. Do I have a volume? Sort of. I've got a uh, 425 milliliters, but that formula requires volume to be in liters. Can I get volume in liters? Yeah, divide by 1,000. So now I can calculate the number of moles. Once I calculate the number of moles, which is the concentration times the volume in liters, then I've got a number of moles. Awesome, I needed that. So I'm going back to this page where I needed the number of moles and I needed the molar mass. Had the molar mass, did not have the, the number of moles. Now I do. So now I can solve that question using the number of moles times the molar mass. Okay. At no point did I just sort of take a number and throw it at my calculator and hope for the best. Not a good plan. At every single point, I looked at the units. What units did I have? What units did I need? Okay. Now, if I start adding more layers to that and start digging into, and, and you know, as we get into acids and bases, we'll be talking about pH, we'll have more formulas, more layers, but the pro process is going to be the same. Now, what happens if you looked at that question and knew exactly what to do? Fine, do it. My job here is if you get stuck, how do you get unstuck? Getting unstuck is not throwing numbers at the calculator and hoping for the best. Getting unstuck is having a plan, having a systematic approach to solving a problem. And there, pay attention to the units, answer the question. Okay, now if you hadn't got there yet, that's how many grams I would need to have. Let's try another one. What's the molar concentration for 15% sodium nitrate? Okay, 15% is not a molar concentration. Molar concentration is moles per liter. Okay, so what do I need for molar concentration? Molar concentration from the formula, from that triangle, is number of moles 
divided by volume. What do I have? What do I need? Well, looking at what I have, I have a 15%. And percent, by definition, is grams over 100 milliliters. If your brain does not say grams per 100 milliliters every time you see a percent concentration, it should. That will be the thing that gets you out of every hole when you're talking about percent concentration. 15% concentration means 15 grams in 100 milliliters. And that is what your brain needs to say every single time. Okay, what does that help me for? Or how does that help me? Well, I don't have grams. I need moles, I have grams. Not there yet. I also have a volume in milliliters. Well, I need moles and I need liters. But if I have milliliters, I can get liters. So where am I? I've got the bottom half of that formula. I need the top half. So I need moles. How do I find moles? Turns out I've got two ways of finding moles. Number one is using concentration of volume, but that doesn't help because I don't know concentration. Number two is using mass and molar mass. That helps. I can find number of moles because I have a mass and I have a chemical formula, which means I have a molar mass. So 15 grams in 100 milliliters because 15% and a molar mass based on a chemical formula and a periodic table, which I've got, gives me 85 grams per mole. If you don't know where the 85 grams per mole comes from, find out because just reading it and, and working with that does not help you. You need to know how to get that number. Okay, so mass divided by molar mass will give me number of moles. That means 15 grams divided by 85 grams per mole is 0.176 moles of that solute. Whew, done. No, not done. Not there yet. Because I wanted molar concentration. So I need to take that number of moles and I need to take the volume. But again, it was 100 milliliters. I need liters and I need to put it into my concentration formula. Number of moles divided by volume is that 0.176 moles of sodium nitrate divided by 0.1 liter, which gives me 1.76 moles per liter. Now I'm done. That is the molar concentration. Okay, a couple things to remember. Number one, when in doubt, answer the question. You don't have to go through it in sort of, sort of a backwards approach. My whole job here, my whole purpose here is to say, if you are stuck, how do you get unstuck? Now, I'm gonna say this out loud, even though a few of you might take offense to it, I hope you do get stuck. I mean that, I hope you do get unstuck. Because if you get, did I say I hope you get unstuck? I hope you get stuck. Because if you get stuck and you learn tools to get yourself unstuck, that's learning. That's a good thing. But figure out what you need to answer the question. What formula you're gonna to use to actually answer the question? What information do you have to, for that formula already? And what information do you need to find in order to use that formula? And if you don't have the information you need, find it. And as you're finding it, you might find another gap. Find the thing to plug that hole, and so on and so on. And the other thing is units. Units, units, units. I actually have a mug that somebody gave me with that phrase on it, units, 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 because I say it all the time. And I love that mug. Anyway, that is key. What units do you have? What units do you need? You've learned how to cancel units out in order to uh, cancel units out. Use that skill. Figure out what units you have, what units you need, and how to analyze those units to uh, get the final answer. Okay. That's going to be a big deal. Anyway, hope to see you soon. Talk to you another time.